Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. I know it's very early in the morning right now. This is like a 7 a.m. upload in the UK. Don't know about you lot, but I'm a little bit excited at the moment. I haven't even gone to bed yet after the Chelsea Atletico game. I've been up now for nearly 20 hours of time. And I was going to do this one in the morning, but I thought, you know what? Like, there's going to be something missing energy-wise. Hang on, let me just adjust this camera a little bit. I might not be as hyped as I am right now at this moment in time, talking about the Champions League draw that is only hours away. And I want to let you guys know that I will, in fact, be live here on GBFC, watching the draw, giving my immediate reactions. So make sure you tune into the stream. I will be live from about 20 minutes before the broadcast begins so that we can talk a little bit and hype and speculate and all that stuff that we do before I get into the meat and potatoes of today's video here, Chelsea News. I would love for you to subscribe to GBFC. If we can hit 200,000, which is a flipping astronomical number, by the way, if we can get that before the end of the season, then it doesn't really matter what we do. It will be like a personal little happiness moment for me. But speaking of happiness moments, the fact that Chelsea are in a Champions League quarter final for the first time in seven years, it's just got me on cloud nine, to be honest. And speaking of cloud nine, you, there's a few players that Chelsea are currently being linked with in that number nine kind of role. And before I get into speculating some of our Champions League quarterfinal opponents, there's a Premier League striker that I want to talk about who Simon Phillips has reported that Chelsea might well be interested in come the summer. Now, the man in question here that we're talking about is none other than Manchester City's Sergio Aguero, arguably the best striker the Premier League's had in the past decade. Aguero is set to be leaving Manchester City this summer, which kind of leads straight into the hands of Manchester City will, in fact, this summer be going out for another world-class striker to lead their front line for many years to come. And we all know who that probably will be. It will probably be Erling Haaland. Now, these Chelsea links to Sergio Aguero, normally, if even though he's 32 years old, which is not the youngest geezer in the world, you know, if we've already got a world-class 30-plus year old, goes by the name of Olivier Giroud. But normally, if Chelsea were going to be linked with Aguero, I'd be sat here with eyebrows raised thinking, oh, that sounds like a lovely idea. Stealing Manchester City's top Premier League goal scorer ever and sticking him into a Chelsea team, it's got Giroud 2.0 written all over it for us, really, doesn't it? But the issue I have with this is that it would kind of be like laying out the red carpet for Manchester City to go all in to sign Erling Haaland. So where do I think I stand in this one? It's a tough one because Aguero, despite being 32 years old, is an incredibly proven Premier League goal scorer, one of the best of the, the generation. However, 32 years old, I think that if there is concrete interest from Chelsea in Sergio Aguero, it can't be at the detriment of allowing Manchester City to go free roam at Erling Haaland. I actually think it would be a travesty if Chelsea didn't go for Erling Haaland this summer after all that we've heard from Roman Abramovich about a massive spending kitty again this summer. He wants to give Tuchel everything in his power to go and secure the signing of Erling Haaland. These Aguero to Chelsea rumours stand true in any shape or form, then I actually think it could be a bit of a disaster. I think City is such a great side. You know, let's not get too carried away about what Chelsea did last night in the grander picture of Premier League and European football. This Man City side are already incredible and Aguero's not been playing that much. If they go and get Erling Haaland, who will lead their line for another decade, English football has got a lot to worry about. City would... Pff, well, it pretty much answers and speaks for itself. So I would love to know in the comments down below, Chelsea in for Aguero, do you support it? Do you want to see it happen? And I mean, I don't really think there's anything other than agreement with what I've said about it would definitely lead City into going for Haaland instead of Chelsea this summer. I think it's going to be, we, we know, it's going to be incredibly competitive regardless for Chelsea to go and sign Erling Haaland. But if it, going for Aguero, no, no, please Chelsea, don't do this one. As much as Aguero is a phenomenal footballer, 
And it would be nice that he wasn't like being an arsehole against us and he could probably be an arsehole against other teams for us. But Erling Haaland is the one that I want. I'm sure he's the one that you want as well. And if we've got the money to splash, we should be going out and doing so. The next piece of Chelsea news that we've got for you this morning comes from the Chelsea app. It literally just flashed up before I started recording this. And we're talking about Borussia bloody Dortmund again. I think maybe this could be like a catalyst for Borussia Dortmund and Chelsea being drawn together in today's Champions League quarterfinal draw. Chelsea are being linked with Dortmund midfielder Dahoud. He's a decent player, you know. I've watched a little bit of him this season and I think he's very useful. He's kind of like that holding midfielder. He's a decent player. But at the moment, again, it's hard for me to really get excited about Chelsea being linked with players in this position when we've got Kovacic in brilliant form, Kante in the form of his life, and Jorginho looking like he's back to the Jorginho that I never saw, that I just want to keep eating those humble pie slices. You know what I mean? It's tough at the moment to really get really excited about Chelsea being linked with players like Dahoud. He's a decent player, but at the same time, I think if there is one guy that we go for from Borussia Dortmund, you all know what I'm about to say. It's Erling Haaland. We should be going for him. Let me know your thoughts on the player in the comments down below. But the reason I wanted to make this this morning so that when you guys woke up in Europe, you don't have to wait for the GBFC live stream for the Champions League quarterfinal draw. You can sit here and see what I think and what I predict and what I want from this Champions League draw. If the draw's already been done and you're still here in this video, you might as well just go and watch the live stream because I will talk about all of the games that are coming up in the Champions League quarterfinal, not just Chelsea's game, in the live stream. However, I put out a little post on Twitter earlier today. It got a lot of responses. There's a couple of hundred people replying to this one. And it was about who do you think we're going to get? You know, like sometimes I get these, th these feelings that Chelsea are going to draw this or that's my prediction. And I'm not just saying this to be to like rub it in, but I'm actually pretty good at this sometimes, you know. And I've got a feeling for some reason that we're going to draw Real Madrid today. I just have that little feeling. However... I want to make it very clear my position on this one because if we do get one of, in my opinion, the two teams that I really want to avoid, Bayern Munich or Manchester City, if we do get either of those teams, I'm not that bothered. When you get to the quarterfinals of a major European competition or the World Cup or the Euros, whatever it may be, you've got to beat the best teams in the competition in order to go ahead and win it. You don't get easy passes in the Champions League. You've always got to beat somebody who is of the calibre of European giant, pedigree beyond belief. There is no bigger than Real Madrid. And for whatever reason, I just think the narrative of Hazard and, you know, the fact he probably won't even be playing if Chelsea do in fact get Real Madrid in that quarterfinal. Real Madrid, you know, I'm going to start off by talking about Real Madrid. I Honestly, as great as they are, they've got immense European pedigree. They've won the competition more than any other club have in the world. But even though they beat Atalanta pretty convincingly, I think it was 5-1 on aggregate, I still don't think that they are quite the Madrid side that we've seen in the past. That being said, I also believe that a team like Real Madrid, who in the past have relied on these Galacticos to win them games, they're also a team in transition and I think that even though they've still got that plethora of experience with the likes of Modric, you've got Sergio Ramos in there, you've got ex-Chelsea boy Thibaut Courtois, you've got the brilliant Casemiro, Benzema, you know, some world-class players all over the field for Real Madrid. I just don't think they have the same kind of... I'm not scared of that Real Madrid team the way that I would have been about five years ago. Man for man, I think they would be very scared of drawing Chelsea because of how difficult we've become to beat. Real Madrid is the one that I think we're going to get and I wouldn't be so disappointed if we did. I'll move into the one team who I do really want to avoid, if possible, and it's Paris Saint-Germain. I think they've got so many great players. You know, Neymar will be back fit. Kylian Mbappe, already one of the best in the world. They've been knocking on the door of European football now for so long. And despite, you know, Thiago Silva being a Chelsea man and being a real Chelsea man, they've got so many great players. And I think that Paris Saint-Germain, they got to the final last year, but they came up against a sensational Bayern Munich team who I think we all still know are the best teams still left in this competition, give or take an informed Manchester City. Paris Saint-Germain would be very difficult. However, this Chelsea team are so hard to beat. 
You're also going to throw in the Thomas Tuchel effect, ex-Paris Saint-Germain manager. He knows all about these players. He knows all about the way that they play. And considering how well-drilled and organised this Chelsea team now are, I think Tuchel would relish the opportunity to go up against Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League quarter-final. So that is the reason why I don't put Paris Saint-Germain in the same bracket of this is not who we really want to play because this is going to be tough. Bayern Munich and Manchester City are the two teams that if I could pick my dream draw, I would try and avoid them for the quarterfinals. You know, you get to a semi and it's, it's almost like each leg becomes a knockout tie because it is that close to the final that you can almost smell it. And it's not all about the quality on the pitch. It's about luck. It's about togetherness. It's about momentum. It's about form. Something that Chelsea have a lot of right now. Bayern Munich... They blew us away last season. We were, it was boys against men. We were beating 7-1 on aggregate. Hudson-Odoi getting us a consolation goal in the tie. Bayern Munich is still just as good as they were last season. Lazio wasn't really a challenge for them. Atletico, the team that we beat comfortably, it wasn't really that much of a challenge for them in the group either. Atletico weren't even close to finishing first in that group. Bayern are the one I want to avoid and Manchester City. You know, it's an English club. Pep Guardiola has got them on this phenomenal run of form. They are blitzing the Premier League. They're running away with it. It's a flipping stroll and a dance for them at the moment in the Prem. And uh, that would be a very, very tough game. We saw how they dismantled us at the bridge earlier this season. I know that we're a completely different side now to what we were then, but this Guardiola team, are, they're source. They're brilliant. They're absolutely fantastic. If we can avoid City for as long as possible and try and, I don't know, let's just, I can't believe I'm saying this, if we can get them in the final, then okay, let's just give it a go. But I'd like to avoid City as well. And the team that I would like to face is Borussia Dortmund. Not because they're the, the best tie. I think we all know that Porto is probably the favourable draw here. But Borussia Dortmund, I think Chelsea can beat them. I think Chelsea can actually beat anybody still left in this competition. There's still a couple of teams to talk about as well, by the way. But Dortmund, very, very good side. Not having the best season in the Bundesliga right now. We just dismantled the best team in La Liga. Man for man, Chelsea would actually match up quite nicely against Borussia Dortmund. And it would also be wonderful to draw Erling Haaland. As much as I can't believe I'm saying this, he probably would score a couple goals against us now. But if we were to beat them, it would definitely put Chelsea in good stead to sign him in the summer. Dortmund would be okay. Porto would be the dream. Again, no disrespect. There's no dream this is easy in the Champions League quarterfinals. There's none of that. But... There is favourable. There is, would you rather? Okay, makes sense. So Porto is the one. And the banana skin that I think is Liverpool. You know, Liverpool in this competition, Jurgen Klopp, two finals in a row. They won it the second time around. Even though their form in the Premier League has been so stuttery, they were very good against Leipzig in both legs. They look very comfortable against a very well-organised side. They've got this Champions League pedigree. Salah's been there before. Mane's been there before. Henderson, as the captains, lifted the trophy. They've got some brilliant players. And even though we went to Anfield and won not so long ago, you don't want to be playing Liverpool in a European competition if you can avoid it. I know that there isn't avoiding now. We're in the quarterfinals. We can't hide under a rock and say, oh, I wish we couldn't play them. I've already said that I don't mind who we get because I'm just happy to be here in the first place in the quarterfinal. And the way that we're playing right now, we can give anybody a good game. I thoroughly believe that from the bottom of my heart. I think we can give any of these teams a good run over a two-legged tie, particularly with how solid we are defensively. Liverpool, I wouldn't really want to face them but if it is we've done it before so have i missed anybody paris saint germain bayern munich manchester city liverpool borussia dortmund porto and the one that i think we're going to get real madrid that is all seven of the teams i i don't mind who it is i hope you guys understand my messaging here and i'm sure a lot of you are going to agree with me i'm just flipping over the moon that we've actually made it this far it was my the peak of my expectation for this season was to reach the last eight of the champions league We've achieved that and now it is all to play for. It is okay for us to start dreaming. Regardless of who we draw in a few hours time, we deserve to get excited about this one. You know, Tuchel's come in, done a phenomenal job at Chelsea Football Club. And I, from the bottom of my heart, believe this is just the beginning. And we could be talking about European last eights for quite some time to come. That's what I thoroughly believe. But anyway, going to wrap this one up here. I... 
hope that you've enjoyed the whole video and I will see you in the live stream where we react to Chelsea's Champions League quarterfinal draw. I've got to try and get some sleep after this one. So finally, I'm going to end this beautiful day. I will catch you all in the stream. Come on, you blues.